Let's have a go at some thermal physics questions, starting off with GCSE, then some A-level, then finishing off with some cheeky thermodynamics questions. 1. What is the definition of internal energy? It's the sum, that means total, of the kinetic energy and potential energy of all particles in a substance. 2. What happens to particles when the temperature of a substance increases, specifically solid and gases? Both cases, the kinetic energy of the particles increases, but for a solid that just means the particles vibrate more because they're in that lattice with those strong bonds. For a gas, it means that the speed increases. A level root means square speed, CRMS. And also important for A level, that means that the momentum increases. Very important when it comes to pressure. Three, this graph shows ice being heated over time. Why is the line flat at points? That's because it's changing state at these points. The energy going in is used to break bonds. That means the potential energy of the particles is increasing, but not the kinetic energy. It's vice versa for the slanty bits. Four, the specific heat capacity equation can be written as delta Re or Q equals M times SHC times delta T. What is delta T? At A level, you might see delta theta. Delta T is the change in temperature. That's equal to final temperature take away initial temperature. A level, we're all too keen to convert into Kelvin, but for SHC, we don't need to. Five, which equation do you use to find out how much energy is needed to say, melt a certain mass of ice? It's the specific latent heat equation. Delta Re or Q equals mass times SLH. Uh, specifically, that's gonna be the latent heat of fusion not vaporization in this case. Six, write an equation that you would use to find the mass of ice at zero degrees C that's turned into liquid water and ends up at five degrees C if you're just given the energy supplied, that's delta E. This is a tough one, take your time, pause the video, see if you can come up with an answer. You might think that this is an A-level question, but this was a question in a GCSE paper recently. So we know that the energy going into the ice is not only melting it, that is M times SLH, mass times SLH, but it's also raising the temperature to five degrees C as well. So it's plus M times SHC times delta T. And if we're looking for the mass, all we do is factorize, and then we can rearrange. That's a tricky one. Seven, why does increasing the temperature of a gas increase its pressure? At GCSE, we can just say particles move faster, so they collide more frequently with the walls and container as well as with more energy or at greater speed. A level, it is crucial that you say that because they have a higher velocity, that means that the change in momentum or the impulse is greater when they collide with the wall, therefore the force exerted on the wall increases. Okay, let's turn up the heat and go full A level. Eight, what is the definition and value of absolute zero? It's the temperature at which particles have no kinetic energy, and that's zero Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius to three sig figs. Nine, what is Boyle's law? Volume of a gas is inversely proportional to pressure, that is for constant temperature. 10, what is Charles's law? It's that a volume of a gas is proportional to the temperature, again, for a constant pressure. And no surprises, 11, what is the pressure law? Pressure of a gas is proportional to temperature, that is for a constant volume. 12, what is the gas law? PV equals little n RT, that's moles times the gas constant 8.31 times temperature, or PV equals big N KT, number of molecules times the Boltzmann constant. If you can't remember which one's which, just remember that big N is a big number, little n is a small number. 13, what are the five assumptions we consider with regards to kinetic theory? The mnemonic is raved. R is particles move at random. A is attraction, that is there is none between particles. V, volume of molecules is negligible compared to the volume of gas. So basically they have no volume themselves. E, particles collide elastically with walls and each other. D, duration of collisions is very short compared to the time between the collisions. 14, what is the kinetic theory equation and what is M in it? It's PV equals a third NMC RMS squared. M is the mass of one molecule, not the total mass of a gas. NM is the total mass of the gas on the other hand. 15, how do you prove that EK equals three halves KT? 
So we just seen that PV equals a third NMC squared. So if it's equal to that, then it's also equal to NKT. I've dropped the RMS here for convenience. Canceling the ends, we see that a third MC squared equals KT. And that looks similar to half MC squared. That's just the normal kinetic energy equation. So therefore, EK is equal to three halves KT. 16. How do you use density of a gas with the kinetic theory equation? Well, here's the equation, and if we take V to the other side, we have Nm over V. That's total mass of a gas divided by volume. That is density. 17. Create an equation for a scenario where an ice cube of mass Mi at minus 5 degrees melts in a glass of water of mass Mw that starts at 20 degrees. Again, this is a tricky one. Pause the video, see what you come up with. So it's all about equating the energy that is being gained by the ice and lost by the water. So on the left, what we have is the SHC equation for the ice being raised from zero degrees to a common temperature T. All that is is MC delta T or MC delta theta, C being SHC in this case. But we know it's being melted as well, so we plus MI times the latent heat. And we know that's equal to the energy lost by the water. So that's just going to be SHC wise. So that's MC delta T again. But we know that the change in temperature is going to be 20 minus this common temperature that the ice and water reach. If this is a proper question, you'd probably be given the masses and you'd be asked to find the common temperature that they reach. So just rearrange and factorize for T. Okay, let's get on to some thermodynamics. This might not apply to everybody. 18, what are the first and second laws of thermodynamics? The first is that Q, heat equals delta U, that's change in internal energy, plus W. The second can be worded like this. Heat cannot be converted into work without it being transferred from a hot body to a cold body. In other words, no process is 100% efficient. You're always going to have a little bit of delta U somewhere. 18. Here is an idealized cycle for a diesel engine. What processes are indicated by 1 and 3, and what equation is true for these? 1 is adiabatic compression, and 3 is adiabatic expansion, also known as the power stroke. Because it's adiabatic, we know Q equals 0, so that means that delta U equals W. Okay, we probably should say minus W. But more importantly, we know that PV to the power of gamma is constant between beginning and end, gamma being the adiabatic constant, and you'll always be given that in questions. 20. What process is indicated by 4? That's when the exhaust opens, some of the gas is released, pressure decreases, but at a constant volume. No work is done because, of course, there's no area under the graph with that line. Of course, I haven't drawn the exhaust and intake strokes on this cycle. 21. What does the area enclosed by a cycle give you, and what does it allow you to calculate? It gives you net work out per cylinder cycle. If you times that by the number of cylinders and the number of cycles per second, that gives us the indicated power of the engine. 22. What is true for an isothermal process? Isothermal means temperature is constant. That means delta U is zero, so Q is equal to W. In that case, PV is constant. 23. How do you calculate thermal efficiency? Indicated power divided by input power. Seeing that we're big boys and girls now, we generally don't give efficiencies as percentages, just decimals. 24. What about mechanical efficiency? That's about the output or brake power divided by the indicated power. So power has lost due to friction and other forces. 25. What is overall efficiency? So we just take the complete output power, that's the brake power, divide that by the input power of the fuel. 26. How do you calculate the maximum theoretical efficiency of a heat engine from its operating temperatures? Efficiency, we might give the symbol epsilon, is equal to the difference in temperatures of the hot and cold space, divided by the temperature of the hot space. And yes, we can replace those with heats instead. 27. How do you calculate the coefficient of performance for a heat pump and a refrigerator? Slightly different. Coefficient of performance is basically the reciprocal of efficiency. For a heat pump, we want hot temperatures, so we calculate the COP with the temperature of the hot space divided by the difference in temperatures. But for a fridge, we want cold, so it's the temperature of the cold space divided by the difference in temperatures of the hot and cold space. 
28. How does a petrol engine cycle differ from a diesel engine cycle? With diesel on the left, we have fuel injected that's ignited by the hot air. But with a petrol engine, we have a gas air mixture that's compressed, but then that's ignited by a spark plug. So if you found that helpful, please leave a like. And if you haven't seen my mind map on thermal physics yet, then click in the card and it'll take you there. Bye for now.